In my quest to find subjects for my jazz vinyl audiophile channel, I have found musicians who know music, musicians who know records, musicians who know the minutia of recording and record pressing technology, and musicians who understand the differences between original and reissue pressings to the most infinite down the rabbit hole degree. Paul Wells is all of these musicians rolled into one. Every time I hang with Paul, I learn something new. Today, while shooting this video, I learned about the differences between MoFi and analog production reissues, and I learned that Paul is one hell of a brushes player. A native of Pittsburgh, PA, Paul is a graduate of William Patterson University and has drummed with some of the finest musicians in the city, including Curtis Steigers and Vince Giordano's Nighthawks, of whom Paul is a member of both of their bands. Paul has also performed and or recorded with a long list of musicians, Deborah Harry, Joe Williams, the Vanguard Jazz Orchestra, the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra, Elvis Costello, Diana Krall, Wynton Marsalis, Eric Alexander, Joel Fromm, Rufus Reed, and Houston Person. Paul is also featured on the soundtracks of The Irishman, Joker, Boardwalk Empire, The Marvelous Miss Meisel. Paul is a contributing writer for Modern Drummer Magazine, as am I, and he endorses Istanbul Agop symbols and Vic Firth drumsticks as I do not. Please join Paul and I as we discuss Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, Neil Pert and Rush, Larry Young, Horace Silver, Keith Jarrett, and Gustav Holst. I wanted to start with this record. This is um, an Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers record on Columbia. Now, um, Art Blakey is best known for recording on Blue Note, but um, he did a few records um, actually around the same time he was starting out on Blue Note, around 56, 57 on Columbia as well. And I believe this was recorded at the famous 30th Street studio. And um, this record's special to me because this is really one of the first jazz records I ever heard. One of the first things I really listened to closely and, and was really influenced by. This was actually, this exact copy was uh, my dad's copy and I kind of pilfered it from him. It's a really great record. It's a great band. Donald Byrd, Hank Mobley, Horace Silver, Doug Watkins, and Art Blakey. Um, super swing, hard bop records. Great writing, particularly from um, uh, Horace Silver. There's a great version of Nika's Dream on here and um, a tune called Infrared and Echo which is a really, really great Horace Silver tune. Echo is uh, his name, Horace, backwards. Um, and there's a tune called Hank Symphony, which is a big drum feature. Uh, oh. And man, th this is the first time I heard drums played this way. It's such amazing, energetic, warm, but fiery, jazz drumming it's just so burning and Blakey just sounds so good on this man and 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 it's a beautiful sounding recording um, people talk about stuff like kind of blue and you know these Columbia records that um, you know have this great spacious sound a lot of people really like the stereos um, but these earlier slightly earlier mono Columbia's are are fantastic there's another great one uh, that the jazz messengers did on Columbia called hard bop this is another mono Columbia that that sounds fantastic, but this record is the one for me and um, When I first heard this I was about 12 or 13 and there's just a certain thing to Blakey's playing on this that just totally captivated me He does some massive press rolls and big cymbal crashes and I was just obsessed with that sound still am really uh, It's still you know, and, and he's playing Gretsch drums on this and it's a very Gretsch sound. There's there's a point in Hank Symphony where he's playing on the floor tom for a while, and you just hear that Gretsch sort of great mid-rangey sort of knocking sound that I love. They're definitely rehearsed in the way that Blue Note Records, you know, paid for rehearsals, and every Blue Note record sounds like these guys rehearsed and really knew the tunes. And it sounds like that on on this too. It's a pretty, uh, I, you know, it might be. The, the performances are slightly shorter. I think there's four tunes per side. Huh. No, it's seven tunes total on this one. So it's, you know, maybe slightly shorter tunes. But yeah, they're just really well rehearsed. To me, the biggest difference is the sound between the Columbia studio and the Rudy Van Gelder Hackensack at the time sound. They're immediate, but they're um, more full range. There's more low-end energy, I think, than the Blue Notes, and, and there's 
I, I'm pretty sure, as I said, it was recorded at 30th Street, which is a, you know, that was a big space, and there's much more of a sense of the room, a much bigger room, you hear a lot of room ambiance, and, and if there is reverb, it's not a spring reverb, it's a plate reverb. Um, Rudy was still using a spring reverb at the time, mm. I believe. It's definitely a very different room sound, I think. That's what I hear more than, you know, a difference in immediacy or punchiness or something like that. So I wanted to include something too that featured a drummer named Roger Humphreys. So I uh, grew up in Pittsburgh and Roger is a drummer uh, from Pittsburgh who never really left. He still lives in Pittsburgh and um, played in Horace Silver's band from 1964 until 1966. Recorded three Blue Note records with Horace. He recorded a um, song for my father Cape Verdean Blues and the Jody Grind. These are all, you know, Rudy Van Gelder classic Blue Note recordings. Um, favorite of the three is probably Cape Verdean Blues. Roger was and still is a, a very important mentor for me. Um, I was lucky enough to uh, study with him all through high school. He actually taught at my high school. I went to a performing arts high school in Pittsburgh and uh, Roger uh, was the drum teacher. He just retired um, maybe. I don't know, 10 years ago or something, but had been there for years and um, is just a marvelous guy and still just plays his ass off. If, if anybody's ever in Pittsburgh, I really, really, or passing through or whatever, I really encourage you to seek out Roger Humphreys, try and find out where he's playing and go see him because he is really, really, really great. He actually has a couple solos on this, I believe. No, sorry, he plays a solo on Nutfield. Um, again, a similar experience for me a, a similar connection to Art Blakey they're both drummers from Pittsburgh and I should point out my my t-shirt is a, a Pittsburgh drummer t-shirt um, Art Blakey Kluke which is Kenny Clark's nickname Joe Harris is a great bebop drummer and Roger Humphreys all Pittsburgh drummers but I remember when I first heard him I right before I started high school I went to see him for the first time knowing I was about to start studying with him and I went to an outdoor concert he was playing in Pittsburgh and I had already heard that Art Blakey record, the Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers on Columbia record, and was, you know, in love with that sound and that feeling. And I remember immediately recognizing when I heard Roger for the first time, like, oh my God, there's a guy here in Pittsburgh who plays like that, who has that same sort of quality in his playing, that same swing and that sound and that hard bop sort of energy and aesthetic and it, it was completely floored by the fact that I could just go see this guy whenever I wanted and hang out with him and study with him and, and um, you know again he's still he's a direct connection to this amazing music and this lineage and, and it's amazing to have him around. Well this band in particular was was fantastic. Joe Henderson was in this uh, band. He's on Song for My Father and Cape Verdean Blues. Woody Shaw is on Cape Verdean Blues and also on the Jody Grind and um, particularly good front line. Um, Horace's writing is always fantastic. It's consistently great on every Horace Silver record. 